instruction is xdhl with the opcode of this which in hex is e3 so the difference of this with the sphl is that in sphl the contents of hl would be moved to sp but here xt is the initials for this statement x is exchange the top of the stack with hl first of all the contents of sp wouldn't change the top of the stack it means that the memory location that SP is pointing to would be exchanged with the HL. In here, HL, the SP wouldn't go to HL. Only HL would go to the SP. 16 bits to 16 bits. No transfer between any place in the memory. Therefore, one machine cycle called fetch. In the fetch machine cycle, everything would be done. But here it's exchange, meaning that the HL register pair would be that this would go to the memory location that SP is pointing to, also SP plus one, because we have 16 bits of data, while in every memory location we have eight bits. So we need to put that into memory locations, and the same thing happens here that SP and SP plus one would go to HL. Now, which one of them would go to which register? The same logic applies always. Lower byte, lower address, higher byte, higher address. This is lower byte. So lower address, this would go to L and then the SP would be incremented. Uh, therefore, or the next location, the, SP, the next location that SP is pointing to would be moved to the H register as well. It's important to know that the SP contents itself, the register itself wouldn't change because this is a bit uh, harder than others. I want to exactly mention or show you everything in the CPU and also memory here. So let's say that the PC is pointing to A000 in hex, meaning that we are at this location. So the contents at this location would be fetched into IR. We have 111. 00011 which is e3 in hex now the fetch step has been done the cpu needs to just um, go execute the other steps as well the first thing is that uh, the sp is pointing to f245 also pay attention that the, in the cpu we have other registers called w and z which the purpose of this register is that they are not programmer accessible meaning that the programmer you as the programmer you never have access to those registers those registers are used only for um, inside um, instructions operations as an example you want to exchange the hl with the memory so sp is f245 this value would be put on the address bus this memory cell would be chosen the content here is 20 20 would be moved and put inside the uh, w register so it would have 20 in hex or 00100000 in binary then let me change the color then the 4f would be put on the data bus by generating the related control signals this so first of all what happened is that from memory we had data moved to the cpu this is called a read step as we called before then it is from the register l would go and saved in the same memory cell that has been chosen or has been selected using the contents of the sp register pair or sp register so the 20 would be overwritten by the value in the l register which is 4f pay attention that 4f is actually 01001111 so then the value that was in the w coming from the f245 would override the value in the 4 in the l register so this would be changed to 20 which again is 00100000 so as you saw the the exchange has happened between the memory and one of the registers because it has been both from the register this the memory to the register and now the register to memory we call this a step right so now so far we had one fetch one write and one um, read then uh, the sp wouldn't be incremented but the value on the address bus would be incremented on the address bus so far we have f245 this would be incremented to f246 
therefore the next memory cell would be selected the contents here by generating the uh, the corresponding signals by the cpu this contents 16 would be put on the data bus and written on this register which is 00010110 then the value in the h register 01 would be put on the data bus again so this um, this step was called uh, another read and now the data in register would be put on the data bus and 01 would override the 16 value so we have 01 here or this value in binary and then whatever value was in the z which is 16 would override the uh, h so you would have 16 here or 001 0 this again was from memory uh, so one, from memory to register was r from register to memory was another w so as you see we say we have one fetch two r's and two w's five steps or five uh, machine cycles they have been executed to uh, complete the instruction of x t h l this is for exchange this is top of the stack top of the stack meaning the location that sp is pointing to and the location after that and the register pair exchange mean that the means that these two bytes would be um, completely exchanged with the hl uh, register pair pay attention that the sp value itself hasn't been changed which means that the incrementation of the sp would be done on the address bus so this was the execution of e3 opcode also you would know that the instruction length is only one byte because we don't need to provide any data or immediate values and this is about it all the instructions regarding the stack they have been explained we explained this one which is the only instruction which with the length of more than uh, one byte the length of this is three bytes and it is uh, organized or categorized in the transfer section the other 10 uh, instructions in the stack are all uh, one byte instructions for push for pop this instruction for exchanging the value of hl with sp which we don't see much of the application in it if you want to load the sp something we might use the double the only thing is that the length of it is one byte but you know that you, all, you already need to change the uh, put some something in hl in, in order to use this instruction this would change the top of the stack to location in memory with two location in cpu in only one instruction and these are for push and for pop push would be sending some value uh, from cpu to memory and this would be from memory to cpu so this was it in the next lecture we are going to actually talk about interrupts interrupts are what we use for the how we use a stack the main maybe uh, application for a stack is in the interrupts enough for this lecture in the next lecture we see you